It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Uh, got the live Deerfield camera up again and uh, very active out there. Lots of sergeant majors and all kinds of very turbulent, though. Not unlike what we got going on in markets uh, or what's probably going to be coming up in markets overall. Uh, let's go into uh, today's well, today's topic. I'm going to talk about uh, it's silver shortages, uh, how much silver is out there compared to gold, and uh, <clears throat> maybe where it's gone, what's happening, and what, uh, what that really uh, does to the price of silver. A lot of folks think I kind of ignore silver, but I really don't. I talk about it, and most of the times uh, I, I primarily talk about gold because gold will lead the way for silver at some point. However, silver does have its uh, uh, potential of catching up. I just can't see the ratios uh, 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 slimming up down to 30 to 1 or 20 to 1, but that's a possibility. You never know. Uh, let's quickly take a look at what's happening overnight. We're like sideways actions for about two weeks now, or more, three, more than that actually, since the, uh, um, what is it, since the big smackdown, since that big manipulative uh, uh, fraudulent smackdown on Sunday night like a month ago. We've talked about this and most of you remember that. Uh, it was like almost uh, $80 or $100 in gold and uh, pretty substantial for silver. I forget what it was at the time, but uh, we're bounced back up. And uh, that smackdown's failed just like the last smackdowns have failed. Uh, you know, back in 2012, the smackdowns they did then to knock the market, knock that bull market out of, out of commission, and they did too. They that The only reason 2012 uh, gold and silver markets got... Uh, uh, knocked down. You know, silver was almost 50 bucks an ounce in 2012, and gold was almost, uh, uh, gosh, gold was uh, uh, approaching at 2,000 or over 2,000 that level uh, at some point. And uh, the only reason gold and silver went down is because of manipulation. They came in and they just smacked it down big time hard. Uh, and it would had a cascading effect. And I think it was just more than one entity, and it probably was um, uh, for uh, central banks. It's probably done by central banks um, or, or, you know, biz or someone like that. It definitely was uh, large entities that smacked down gold and silver prices in 2012. And I think they've tried to do it again here as of recently, just, just recently, not too long ago with that $100 smackdown, but it failed, folks. It worked in 2012. I think they did it in 1980s as well. I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, when the Hunt brothers were in there, they went and they smacked down the prices then too. These are central bankers they're doing, but I think their smackdowns are failing right now. Why do I think they're failing? They're failing because they, they lack the physical for years and years and years. Um, there was enough physical out there, both metal, silver, and gold, that uh, uh, the uh, uh, tail could wag the dog, the tail being paper markets, the dog being the uh, uh, physical silver markets and gold markets. Uh, so for years they were able to, uh, uh, the, you know, the tail was able to wag the dog. But I think the dog is about to get control of the tail again. Um, he may even be tailless by the time this is all done. Uh, tough to say, though. Let's see what happens. Uh, overnight market, 1795. As I said, we're kind of range bound. We're sitting at 1807. Uh, let me do a quick refresh because it's kind of been all over the place this morning a little bit. There we go. Eh, like I said, right in that range. Uh, 1795 is the low, 1807. Boy, that's a really tight spread between the high and low overnight. Uh, I wonder what that means. I wonder what that says. Uh, silver, uh, 2369, 2392. Not uncommon for silver to move in 30 and 50 cent ranges. That's just kind of what silver does. Uh, currently, sitting at 23.85 right now. Again, smackdowns did not work with precious metals. Uh, platinum just surprises the living hell out of me that is as cheap as it is at 941. That's just incredible. Um, <clears throat> I've been saying that I thought platinum was way cheap at 1000 1100 but uh, well, it just doesn't. You know, but platinum has its own fundamentals. I guess palladium does as well. Palladium's taking quite a crap. You know, we don't follow it, but look at 2007. We were in the mid-2000s uh, at one point what, six months ago or whenever? Not too long ago. So I'm uh, not quite sure. Maybe palladium being down has a lot to do with car sales being down because they have a lot to do with catalytic converters. So this could have something to do with uh, just production overall and uh, sales in the automotive you know, in the automotive industry, which are substantially lower. So that could have uh, knocked platinum or palladium down. Uh, platinum is used in the industry as well. So Again, I haven't read, if any of you uh, want to comment and you've done any reading or investigation of what's keeping platinum at this level or what the uh, opinion of smart people is, uh, please put it in comments. I haven't done it yet. 
so where are we at right now? Well, we're kind of sideways. Uh, again, great. Listen, if it's not getting monkey hammered, providing you an opportunity to buy the friggin' dip, then uh, this is a great opportunity. You know, it's still a good opportunity right here to buy this metals. Buy the dog instead of the tail. Don't buy the tail, folks. <laughs> buy the dog. And it's a great opportunity to buy the dog because you can get the dog for about the same price as a tail. And I think the dog represents a much better value than a tail. Just my opinion. Well, Let's move over to, you know, I like to, I like to read ZH, and you all know why I like to read ZH, because it's not a, corporate, uh, uh, not a corporate entity that gives you a single narrative and a single opinion and makes fun of everything else they don't agree with. Uh, ZH gives you all different types of opinions, all different types of narratives, and allows us, us people that have half a brain to figure out on our own instead of having the talking heads on corporate TV or the uh, uh, corporate media uh, telling us what to think and how to think, which is very typical. That's why I turned off the news like in 2008. I don't listen to that corporate trash anymore, quite frankly. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, I, like to, I like to use my own brain. I know you guys do too. That's why you listen to me. Uh, update on gold and silver price fundamentals. That was kind of interesting. Uh, a little too technical for us to get into, but uh, again, he talks about the gold and silver ratios and uh, gold and silver prices, a recipe for rising gold and silver. Um, and I, some of you may expect me to read this to you, to you but it, it's going to bore the living hell out of you. And it's nothing, to, it's, it's a great article, don't get me wrong, but very technical in, in a lot of ways. Uh, but one of the points that he, he brought up down here is the silver squeeze over. Um, and I wanted to read this to you. Uh, incidentally, and this is the author's talking, Wall Street began their campaign to squeeze silver sometime in January, Wall Street silver. The price of the dollar in silver terms moved up, then down, and then up, and so on. However, the scarcity of silver rose during the most active period of their campaign with some jitter from the start of the year through the end of February. That move in the basis is not correlated with the move in the price. It is a period of gently growing scarcity. After the move was over, presumably the silver traders on the Reddit channel bought as much as they cared to buy. The coal basis moves with the price. Notable, its levels remain elevated, as those who bought silver eagles and small bars probably did not sell the metal back into the market. Will they? Fundamental analysis is looking at the fundamentals as they exist in the market. Right now, it is not trying to predict changes that may be psychological, although we can make some inferences. Well, I got a couple comments on this I'd like to uh, make. First, I, I've spoken about the, you know, I think we talked about the Red Wall Street silver uh, um, Reddit group. And uh, I, I, I very, it, it pleased me to see that group exist and, and open up uh, for the single reason I didn't, first off, I didn't really believe that they had the power and the resources and the money to go up against uh, uh, these major bullion banks and these uh, uh, entities that uh, uh, manipulate the prices of gold and silver, which they've been doing for a long time. I mean, you're not going to go up against the likes of JP, even though JP is no longer a short position or a long position. You're not likely to go up against the big, you know, the, the, again, the people that have the big short positions and the long positions. You're, you're not going to fight that, uh, even a small Reddit group. And the other thing is that Reddit group, uh, uh, it, it was a lot of small buyers. I mean, which is cool, which is awesome, and that's what made the the whole Reddit Silver Group awesome to me. Is that it was a small, it was a lot of small buyers. Not enough though. I don't know how many were fourteen thousand. I don't know how big that site was, ten thousand, whatever it is. Um, but a lot of small buyers buying ones and tens, and unfortunately, some of them buying shiny stuff, you know, uh, for too much of a premium. How, no less though. It was nice to see younger folks and younger people in the in those groups become familiar with the silver uh, market and become familiar with the silver prices. Unfortunately. A lot of those folks that were in that silver group were people that had uh, uh, hopes of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, other Reddit group. What was it? Wall Street Shorts or something like that. Uh, that uh, drove that uh, movie, uh, AMC or whatever, <laughs> AME or AMC or whatever it is. I've forgotten now. Sorry about that. It just sucks getting old. <laughs> but uh, a, the, uh, you know, the short squeeze that they did with that. And, they, and a lot of the people that were in that, there were some big whales involved with that short squeeze. Trust me. Anyone thinks that the uh, uh, short Wall Street dealy, uh, not the silver squeeze, but the other one um, that made big waves with, uh, I think, AMC. Uh, anyone that thinks that, uh, I think it was AMC, I'm sorry if, if I'm incorrect, um, just whatever it was. <laughs> uh, 
anyone thinks that was completely organic is uh, uh, delude some cells because that was not a completely organic thing. There was a few big whales that orchestrated that whole uh, short Wall Street thing and, and fed into it and fueled into it. And they did it for their own specific purposes. Trust me, they wanted to get rich, but they used a bunch of little guys on Reddit to do it. Uh, they weren't interested in going into the silver squeeze market, obviously, uh, because they're probably on the short side of that market. So they didn't want you screwing with it or the small guy screwing with it. So that's why you didn't see the big whales go into the uh, silver short squeeze market, in my opinion. You saw a lot of the small guys do it. And unfortunately, a portion of those small guys that were doing it were the get rich crowd that uh, got made some money in the AMC and the Wall Street Red by following the crowd. And they figured, oh man, here's a silver short squeeze. We're going to go in there and follow that crowd. And it really didn't develop legs. Why? Because again, the whales weren't in that market. They either knew better or they're running the other position. Uh, and uh, uh, I, this small Reddit group of silver Reddit people. Um, I think right now the group's probably containing people that are really want to be there and under the get rich guys are quick are out of there. I'm sure of that. Uh, get rich quick people. Uh, I see them come into the gold and silver market when things are hot all the time. Uh, you try to explain to them that you know this is about wealth preservation. Don't get into this get rich quick. And the first downturn they see or any kind of sustained downturn for any short period of time or a medium period of time, they get frustrated and they sell back. Uh, th very typical. That's the get rich crowd, and that's why most of them will never get rich because they follow the crowd, and they're usually the uh, they're the bait. They're not the whale. So uh, and <laughs> and that can apply to so many other things. So uh, let's take a look here. Uh, notable, its level remains elevated. Those who bought, okay, will they? Will they sell? Fundamental analysis looking at. I can tell the author here who uh, wrote a really nice article. I recommend to write uh, reading this by Keith Weiner right here. Uh, uh, Weiner, uh, Weiner, Weiner, I'm sorry, sorry my apology, but uh, update on gold and silver price fundamentals September 4th. You can read it free in Zero Hedge. Um, I like the article. I would I would say to the gentleman that wrote this that I've been a frontline soldier on the uh, retail end of the market and the wholesale end of the uh, uh, precious metals market. I wholesale a lot of silver and gold. You know, not the levels the huge guys do, but uh, I also retail. I understand both markets fairly well. Been in it a long time. But what I understand just as much as the wholesale guys do, and as much as any writers or experts or anything out there do, is I'm on the front lines. I, I'm a counterman. I work at the counter. I work directly with people that are buying precious metals. I've done it since uh, 1977. I've been through a couple markets. And what I can tell you is that even to 2012, I sold uh, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of gold uh, over my years. I don't even know. I, I, I don't even count, you know. And I can assure you that I've not seen capitulation in the large, larger whales, even in 2012. Uh, I mean, 2012 through 2016, I did see some capitulation. It was mostly from people that, you know, the get rich crowd that were disappointed when uh, uh, silver got monkey hammered. So they kind of let go. But I have not seen capitulation amongst some of my big whale customers that I have. You know, I do have some whale customers. I've, I've not seen capitulation amongst. In fact, they keep stacking at these lower levels. Why are these uh, people keep stacking at lower levels? Because they see the writing on the wall. They see the point where the dog will wag the tail or just completely lose the tail. Uh, but no less, uh, I can assure the author of this uh, 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 article right here that capitulation hasn't happened. I haven't seen it. Ha I didn't even see it happen in 2012, barely. Uh, most people just, you know, they, they bought up, they bought on the way up, and silver just took its shit and went back down to 14, 15. But again, highly manipulated by a couple big short positions, JP probably being one of them at the time, but they are now a long position. Uh, so, And they fraudulently manipulated these markets. That's 2012 got hammered because, think about it, they've, been, uh, they've already been fined, 980, almost a billion dollars they were fined for spoofing and manipulating gold markets. Now, when it happened in 2012, those markets were, I really think, we should go back and investigate 2012, but it's way beyond that time frame right now for criminal charges because I think that these big central banks, and it might have been JP as well, that went in and monkey hammered those markets down from $50 silver down to 15 uh, over a course of uh, time, uh, and gold markets down you know, from 2000 down to 1200 a real low at the time. I think those people should be in jail. 
absolutely not just fines, they should be in jail. They cost people millions and millions of dollars through fraudulent transactions just to drive the price down. In my opinion, JP should, you know, uh, Jamie Demon and his henchmen and, and all those other companies, they should be in jail. But the problem is too big to, uh, too big to fail, too big to jail. And what really happens is they pay a billion dollar fine because they made 20 billion screwing the market and screwing the small guys. So, F these people. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean to go off. You know me. I get a little uh, passionate about these things sometimes. So <clears throat> that's my opinion. <laughs> uh, we haven't even got to the, t the, the, uh, uh, the thing that I mostly wanted to talk about. So this might be a little longer video than normal. Uh, my apology here. And I'm going to take a sip of coffee because I just dried out my whole throat uh, uh, throwing that one at you. <laughs> mm. Okay, not too much to talk about here. Uh, you know, I always kind of delve into politics a little bit, um, and you know, I got my new thing. Uh, when I see someone, uh, I'll describe them as a uh, uh, predator, producer, <laughs> producer, predator, or uh, oh gosh, parasite. Okay, and let's just go down here if I can recognize a person. Uh, calls for investigation means Cambridge. Uh, that's uh, uh, predators right there. And decent article, Constitution's time to make America free again. Could not argue with that. Uh, that man that wrote that article must be a producer because I agree. It's time to make America free again. It's time to follow our friggin' constitution. Uh, China lodges formal protest over possible. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the Shiite is going to go down with this stuff at some point. I just hope we don't get into a shooting war with China. That would be awful. Uh, however, the uh, military uh, industrial complex would love that. So would the media, and so would some war hawks in the uh, Democratic and the uh, Republican Party would love that as well. Uh, you know, war. Hey, they love war as long as it's for the right reasons that they, you know, what they think the right reasons. They don't mind sending your kids off to die. Uh, again, I'm going to stay in politics. Sorry. Uh, let's see here. Nah, not too much. We're gonna kind of skip. Uh, uh, we're gonna skip the uh, ZH today. Not a lot of economic news in here. Not too much in precious metals. And I found the same thing with this uh, uh, article. That, you know, I like to read articles from here occasionally or point them out to you. Uh, this is a free website too. American Institute for Economic Research. And uh, what did I see? In trouble transacting with uh, Bitcoin. Good article done by a local guy down here at FAU, a local professor as well. Um, but it, but it very again not going to read it to you for you folks that are into uh, uh, cryptos and understand that market. It uh, very technical in in a lot of ways too. And again, this would be a two hour article if I even started to read parts of it. Uh, but for you crypto folks out there that understand that market, uh, I'd recommend reading this trouble transacting with Bitcoin, and uh, that's on AI uh, American Econ Institute for Economic Research. Good site by the way too. I like it again. Different viewpoints. Um, I think the guys at GATA.org are on vacation because I haven't seen a lot of articles, new new articles and new content on here. Um, however, again, most of you folks that have listened to this video for a long time know that uh, uh, I, I recommend or I really want you to have GATA.org on your uh, bookmarks bar because these are the guys that tell you um, who the casino players are, how the casino plays the game, who cheats at the casino, what who the players are. If you don't have GATA.org on your bookmark bar, then you are simply uninformed in precious metals markets and who the players are and who the casino is. Uh, just my opinion. Not a lot to talk about here. Uh, Biz Gold swaps fell slightly in August. Um, Dawson City, Hardy, Yukon Gold are still, um, again, kind of, we talked about this the other day, actually, Ken Corporate. Uh, and this was a good uh, uh, little video I did the other day because, you know, uh, Palantir, <laughs> Palantirs or Palantars, I, I still didn't learn how to pronounce it, sorry folks, um, made a very powerful move using uh, uh, computers, uh, uh, artificial intelligence that they use, that the government and uh, uh, covert agencies use. So they use that to determine that they needed to buy $50 million in gold bars. That speaks volumes. Uh, not going to go into that right now. You can read this article and you can look at my video from the other day, which is called... Uh, Oh, what I called my video the other day. Let's take, well, anyway, we'll look at it later. Oh, all right. Let's get into what I was talking about here earlier. And we've talked about this many times. You know, I've been doing these shows daily uh, for over, gosh, it's going to be on a year and a half plus uh, every day. I haven't, I, you know, except for holidays, I take the day off here doing these videos. Um, but uh, I've talked about this many times, is uh, the supply and demand side of silver, and the, the, that silver has been thrown away in landfills, recycled. There's, there's not, I, I've said this for a long time, but I don't think there's as much above-ground silver as uh, people think there are. And uh, where is, 
I saw an article somewhere that kind of referred to it, but don't have it up here. All right, let's take a look. This is the Global Source Silver Institute. If you believe the numbers here, um, it's kind of interesting. There's a few things you can take away from this. Is uh, uh, Let's take a look. Supply, uh, mine production. Let's just go line by line. Mine production since 2012, which was our last bull market. Uh, has kind of remained steady in that 795, 800. What's the high here? 900. Uh, obviously, here's the start of our next bull silver market, I think, in gold market when silver started, you know, after it got slammed uh, by uh, 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 criminals in 2012. Um, you know, the uh, mine production was still up there. You know, they were trying to produce silver, and we were still selling quite a bit of silver even after the crash. A lot of folks figured it was a good buying dip. Uh, however, the buying dip. You know, went from thirty dollars to twenty-five dollars to twenty to to damn near that uh, fifteen, thirteen dollar mark for a period of time. So uh, not, a, yeah, they really slammed it. Trust me, the criminals slammed it good then. But uh, I don't think they have that ability as much now as they used to. Uh, again, after uh, uh, hopefully regulators, the the idiot regulators we have uh, might be a little more savvy than they used to be. Uh, but let's take a look at uh, mine production as we get up here. D didn't change much. I was really surprised to see this. Look at this, 2020. I was expecting to see mine production down substantially in the year 2020 uh, just because, you know, I, you figured mines would be closed, but maybe all the miners wear masks and none of them get sick. <laughs> maybe just very healthy people or something. But obviously, it looks like the supply, mines, mine production supply, did not slow down at all. That's pretty amazing to me. I would have expected... Um, so if mine supply didn't shut down substantially, why is uh, uh, why is there a shortage of silver out there? I mean, you know, like I said, is most of it been thrown away? Is it getting harder to find? You know, is the easy silver, you know, like easy oil, you know, where they said it was just like bubbling out of the ground, Jed Clampett, <laughs> um, you know, uh, shooting at the ground and some oil pops out. I mean, there was oil that cheap and easy to get. That, that probably was not uh, far-fetched from the truth, Jed Clampett there, but... Uh, um, it's getting harder and harder. You know, we have to go into, uh, you know, tens of thousands of feet now to uh, uh, get oil out of the ocean, dangerous places, much harder to get. I wonder if silver is the same way. I wonder if we mine the easy resources now and we're down to harder resources. But again, don't understand why this number is so high. I would have expected lower production. Now let's take a look at recycling because uh, recycling is something that uh, uh, this video is kind of based around is, is uh, what's happened to all, a lot of silver out there? Why is silver seem to be short in supply? Well, a lot of this has to do with silver's been thrown away for years and years and years, disposed of. It's not coveted quite the same as gold is. Uh, however, you know, um, you know, think about electronic devices. Back, I don't know when we did, but 80s, 90s, whenever it was, um, the world agreed to go off of lead-based uh, solders. We stopped using lead-based solders. We started using silver-based solders. Silver became more used in uh, electronics and gold to some small degree. Uh, but let's take a look at recycling. 2012, after the uh, last fraudulent takedown, uh, 2000, uh, two thousand. 216 and wavers a little bit on recycling and there's a little but you would think with the capitulation all right the capitulation of 2012 when those markets got uh, you know when the uh, criminals monkey hammered the markets down in 2012 uh, that uh, recycling would be uh, up substantially well I'm gonna get rid of my gold doggone it it didn't do anything but not really you see what I'm talking about not much capitulation in recycling recycling is the scrap industry so not a lot of people were selling gold after this more people were selling their gold in 2012 during the height of the market than after in the bear market uh, but let's take a look where we're going again look 2012 216 and recycling and again this surprises me as well that the number of 182 for uh, uh, 2020 and uh, 1962 uh, well 2020 I'm just surprised there was that much even recycling I'm not sure these numbers are absolutely correct they may be but you know recycling would be scrap buyers you know those little guys on the corner you know and, and cumulatively all of them together you know buy a huge amount of scrap which goes to the major refiners and uh, uh, most of those guys were closed in 2020 so I just don't see that number, I mean, uh, there's a couple numbers that don't make sense to me. Uh, 784 and, and 182 in recycling. That being the case, then, uh, you know, uh, the scrap guys were working all through 2020, and I happen to know they weren't. Most of them were closed. There were closures, mandates all over the world. So how is the scrap recycling so high in silver uh, in 2020? That just does makes no sense to me. Did they just estimate that? I don't know. Uh, that number seems off, but if it's true, then... Uh, 
and we're still having shortages, it, it just simply means that the production we've had, uh, mine production and recycling we've had to date, uh, are not making an effect and are not uh, catching up. You know what I mean? There's more stuff going out the door than coming in. And uh, let me move on to net hedging supplies since that's technical. I'm not going to talk about that. It doesn't seem to be too huge. Look at that too. Uh, net hedging supply, total supply. Um, interesting number to look at, 2012 at the height of the last market in silver and all through here. Didn't change that much. That, and again, what concerns, well, that is down a little bit, 976.2. Uh, but not substantially of all these years. That shouldn't create the shortages that we're having. I just think that the production of mines and recycling was barely keeping up, even through the bull markets here, was barely keeping up with the physical, physical supply for silver. I honestly believe we've got some severe supply issues out there for above ground silver. They're not, not talking about it. And uh, meanwhile, JP, uh, from their short position, is going to become multi-zillionaires because they've got stockpiled billions of ounces or some millions of ounces. Uh, so those fuckers, excuse me, those bastards are going to get even richer. Um, oh, I said the F word. Haven't thrown one of those off in a little while here. Uh, let's take a look at the demand, industrial demand from 2016. Again, the last bull market. Industrial demand hasn't slowed at all, except for which to be expected, 2020. Uh, so it's off there by what, uh, uh, I'm not, 30 or something like that? Uh, 30 million ounces? I'm not quite sure what they're showing here. I think it's millions. Uh, in 2021, uh, industrial demand back up again seems to be in par. And actually, industrial demand seems to be even higher than it was during the uh, uh, last uh, uh, criminal smackdown and in between there. All right, so I don't see any big differences in numbers here, really, except for, again, 2020 a little bit. Um, of which photovoltaics, photo, photography, who uses silver in photography anymore? Will someone make a comment down there? I thought the last time we used silver in photography was when we were making uh, actual prints. Maybe they still make prints out there. Uh, jewelry, uh, which accounts for very small of it. Silverware, uh, <laughs> I don't even know anybody. Most of the silverware I know gets scrapped. We buy, you know, uh, tens of thousands of ounces of silverware uh, a year, uh, literally, even more than that, I'm sure. Uh, net physical investment. Now here, this this is interesting. Look, 2012, uh, at the height of the uh, uh, bull market there, you had uh, 241.9. Uh, and then 2000, the year after, look at the investment demand. Even after the market went down, there were people buying the dips here. And as you can see, those dip buyers slowly wound down. Where's 2016? 2016 right here. You know the old saying is that, uh, again, net physical investment, where was net physical investment at its low point? Right about here and right about here. This is where people go, you know you know when they say buy when there's blood in the streets? This is blood in the streets for silver right here. This is our lowest point. Uh, right through here you had buyers and then as far as net physical buyers, again, our lowest point right here. And I said, our, I said we got into this current bull market in 2016. A lot of people don't understand that bull markets can last a decade or longer, uh, especially with precious metals. We are in the beginning stage as well. Yeah, we're still in the first third of our uh, bull market right now, I believe, in uh, uh, precious metals. But take a look now at net physical investment. Look where it is right here, 252.8, uh, uh, higher than it was at the height of the 2012 market, and uh, uh, just a tad lower than uh, uh, two th I mean 2013, uh, again, where we had a lot of dip buyers buying silver. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of them still were buying at the mid-20s and mid-30s at this point. And again, that discourages people, and you can see that right here. Uh, total demand, market balance. Well, net investments in ETPs, uh, FETPs. The ETPs are the tail dog, uh, the tails. Uh, so I won't even consider this real metal down here. And that's really about it. All right, now that we did that, um, we've talked about silver and uh uh, 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 unlike gold, silver gets thrown away. I mean, it gets thrown away in cell phones, TVs, uh, every electronic thing we've made for the last 20, 30, 40 years. I forget when we went on the went on the uh, silver soldered standard, um, and not to mention all the other things that silver is used for, the, and it gets thrown away as well. Uh, let's take a look at, and, and we'll get into this. I want to, I want to kind of read this, but let's take a look at the visualization. All the gold bullion bars in the world uh, visualized, and uh, r these beginning. Uh, pictures. This is so cool too, folks. If you get a chance, you've never seen this. Go to Demonocracy and type in gold, visualize, and bullion bars and read all this stuff. It's just so awesome. Uh, we're not going to go into it. What if I got an underwear ad up here? <laughs> uh, let's see. Not that I minded it, but uh, um, 
uh, 50 grams of gold, it's kind of showing you what, it's comparing a $100 bill and a full-size pen, you know, a, a, a Mont Blanc or something, a nice uh, uh, pen there, and it's showing you the size of gold compared to a $100 bill. There's one ounce of gold. It's, you know, it's about the size of a dollar bill on a bar. Uh, there's a, in a cube right there. And then they're going to show you what a one kilogram looks like compared to that. And this gets even more cool. Or 400 troy ounces of bowl, uh, gold compared to, uh, what is it? Uh, the gold bar to the right is worth 800000 displayed on the left uh, at $2,000 an ounce. Well, it's a little bit lower, but there's what uh, a gold... There's what a 400 ounce gold bar would bring, that many uh, $100 bills right there. And as we go down here, you can see a pen knife and a pocket knife. Now again, this is just cool. I'm going to let you look at this for yourself. I encourage you to look at it because it really is awesome. Uh, but uh, let's go down here and see where uh, world governments, gold reserves, this brings up a good point too. And It's not the subject of this uh, video, but uh, I've always been saying, what do central banks own? What are the world's elite own? You know, the guys that run the whole world, not the politicians. They don't run it. They're just the suckers that do the bidding of the central banks. Um, but central banks own gold. They don't own paper money. They don't. And look, look at the amount of, look, Germany, 3,396.3 uh, tons. United States supposedly has 8,133.5 tons. Um, China, is China in here? They probably are not. Look, there's what they have listed for China, but China's gold holdings supposedly are three times as much as the United States. They haven't reported their gold holding in such a long time. And, uh, you know, if you know the Communist Chinese Party, they just can outright lie to your face. And they'll admit they lie or won't tell you the truth. Unlike our government, who says they're sell telling you the truth, but uh, <laughs> they do what they want behind your backs. Uh, but I digress. Uh, but, you know, this is what central banks. This is what the world's elite owns, folks. They don't own uh, currency. They don't own diamonds. They don't own Bitcoin. They own this. Uh, all the gold in the world mined in history, 165,500 tons stacked in 400 ounce gold bars, would come up to about just above the knees or the thigh of the Statue of Liberty. Uh, there's Bernanke with his helicopter money, too. <laughs> it's cute. And, uh, it talks about, you know, who owns all this gold, level one. As you can see, most of the gold in the world has not been thrown away. It's still out there. It gets recycled. It gets reused. People just don't throw gold away. Um, and again, a small amount of it is recycled. Uh, you know, things are gold-plated to keep them, uh, you know, from corroding. So gold is used in anti-corrosive effects and other things. But all the gold in the world in a solid gold cube. Uh, pretty cool. And what does this have to do with recycling? Well, they actually show, and again, similar thing, I recommend you look this for silver as well, Demonocracy Info, the numbers visualized in physical, oh no, uh, silver visualized in bullion bars. Shows you the same thing, uh, the comparison of uh, silver bars, and uh, there's a lovely lady sitting on a couch, and uh, 100 tons of silver, and there's a guy standing next to it, one ton, anyways, good read, and you'll really like this, but, uh, oh, this is kind of interesting to silver, it shows you who owns some of the silver? Private bullion, this would probably be us, you know, the retail people. Uh, 3.4 tons, LMBA stocks. Uh, good info here, folks. It kind of, again, I think this is a couple of years old. It was based on $2,000 gold and probably a higher silver as well. Uh, but uh, again, there's some interesting things here. And here's why I brought you here. And this is uh, what the, the, you know, what we're talking about in this video. Uh, is about recycling silver and recycling gold. As you notice, you didn't see a large group of, uh, you know, they didn't say gold had been lost to mining. Take a look at this. Silver lost throughout history. 634,199 tons. All the gold mined in history, 166,500 tons. Look at the amount of silver just lost. People thrown away, lost, whatever you want to say. Not even used, uh, lost, you know, get in landfill is likely part of this right here. Compared to all the gold ever mined. That's a lot of silver gone. And here's the silver currently in existence, all right? So what this means is that as much silver that's in existence above ground, half, about the same amount has been thrown away, lost through history, just gone, gone. And the problem is, is that I don't think that it's getting easier to mine this stuff. You know, unless they start mining landfills, um, I kind of think that uh, silver is becoming much rarer than gold and will become rarer than gold at some point. It's kind of harder to mine, harder to recycle if people don't let it go. I think the above ground silver stocks are uh, uh, going to be at some point less than this cube. You see this right here? I think there's going to be less than that. Now, it's still here on Earth, but it's in landfills. It's been thrown away. They don't know where it's at. 
Uh, so how do you recover this? Well, it won't be easy and it won't be in any short period of time, probably not in our lifetime. Uh, so folks, I'm going to make the announcement that I do genuinely think that above ground silver is probably just as rare as above ground gold. I said it. <laughs> and uh, that's my opinion. Well, let's move into, uh, hey, that was the kind of um, uh, the whole uh, idea of the whole video here is, is yeah, you know, people have been saying, do, do I think, you know, I've been asked many times, do I think silver is more rare by savvy people? Uh, a lot of people don't understand this, that uh, uh, silver has been thrown away and there's not much above ground. But savvy people have asked me, uh, uh, Brian, do you think uh, silver is rarer than gold as far as above ground supplies? And uh, I genuinely believe they do. I, I genuinely believe it is. I really, really do. Especially when you see the investment get, demand get sucked off the market. I've said a couple times in the last year that I believe that silver is a, uh, a strategic metal. I really do. You could add it to the strategic metals list because... Uh, you know, without, especially in the green world we're in right now, say, for example, there's such a shortage of silver and all the manufacturers don't have enough silver to put in solder. What are you going to solder stuff together? What are you going to use for the connections if you don't have silver? You going to go back to lead again? I doubt it based on, uh, you know, again, based on the new green world we're in, they're not going to go back to lead. What are they going to use as a replacement? If you got any ideas, put it in the comments. But meanwhile, there's not enough silver out there, folks. It's rare. It's, it's going to be as rare as gold, in my opinion, especially when it's harder to mine, harder to find. And, uh, uh, again, more people are stacking it. So keep stacking physical. Stay away from the tail, uh, which is the paper, and uh, the people that, the criminals that run the paper. Stay away from them, folks. Well, let's take a look at yesterday's video, Producers versus Predators and Parasites. Uh, it's probably the lowest view video because of the title. <laughs> people like snappy titles, I know. Clickbait title, and I don't do clickbait. I only do titles that I'm going to really talk about and get into. Uh, I hate clickbait titles. However, I'm learning that in order to get a lot more attention, I've got to put titles up there that mm, attract people's attentions. I don't think producers versus predators and parasites did that. However, our view time was up tremendously. More people watched the video all through, which tells me our content was good on yesterday's video. We just didn't get the views because of the... Uh, again, I'm just sharing some stuff with you that I'm learning about YouTube and learning about you know how to do these things. Uh, but no less, our view time was up tremendously. I think everybody that actually clicked on that video uh, watched it most all the way through, which is unusual, you know, for, for the majority, uh, from what I've noticed on, uh, based on the uh, statistics that I've been looking at. Uh, kind of interesting, though. Good content yesterday, and I explained the difference between these different types of people. And it does have a lot to do with precious metals because parasites, predators, and uh, uh, producers, you know, uh, again, uh, I told you I'm going to start using that word. Is he a producer? It, are they? Entity, whatever. I'm going to use it pronoun they. <laughs> are they? Entity, person, whatever. Are they a producer, predator, or parasites? When you look around your world, uh, let's look at J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan is a predator. So they fall on the predators list. Uh, parasites would be like the government. I would call the governments the parasites. Producers would be small business people and business people out there that work hard for a living and the guy that works hard as a job for a living, mechanic, uh, carpenter, whatever that may be. Those are uh, producers. So there's a couple examples and uh, I talked about that yesterday and uh, again I think it's uh, very valid to talk about that stuff. You know politics and economics uh, have a lot to do with precious metals so uh, that's why I go there. Uh, let's take a look at some comments from yesterday. Uh, I'm going to go to newest first, uh, and then I'm going to go to the oldest. <laughs> That's kind of just the opposite, but I can go up the page. I'd like to thank everybody for watching, as always. Um, I think, uh, oh gosh, look at all those videos. Some of those videos I, I kind of look at. No, I never watched that one. Why is that in my feed? Hmm, interesting. Well, no less. Uh, thanks for watching, Wayne and uh, Tree Climber and uh, Chris. I believe, uh, hey, that's a nice compliment. I made a great economics teacher. No, nah, I wouldn't. I don't know. I'm not good with the small details. I'm a macro guy. I like to, you know, there's people out there that are, the two, you know, I'm two kinds of people. <laughs> there I go again. Uh, there's people out there that are really good at stepping out and looking at the big view and they can kind of see where things go. And they're able to work in that environment. And, uh, you know, you got to have people that can step out and see things. That's what I am. I'm, I'm a macro view guy. I, I can step outside the world, look and, and kind of see where everything's going and, and how things are moving in groups or whatever. I'm, I am far from a, uh, a guy that can go in and look at the details of things. I'm not big on details, uh, and I'm not quite sure. Macro would be outside. What would be the inside? Not micro, but uh, maybe micro, but I'm not a micro thinker. <laughs> I'm a macro thinker. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And you got to be a micro thinker if you're a teacher in economics. Uh, you're definitely, I'm probably more of a slash economic slash political slash uh, 
uh, precious metal and coin guy. <laughs> uh, Tree Climber, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I can't disagree with that. Uh, Joey, you just reminded me of uh, uh, coffee. i got to take another sip of coffee here. This dries my voice. I do no editing on this, by the way. If you folks, uh, I just run straight through this and just blab the whole time, as you can tell. So, hang on. I see a lot of videos they cut. You can see like the person stops and then the, the whole video changes for a second, brief second, blah, blah, blah. We just run right through this. It's coffee sipping and all. Um, George uh, says, uh, oh, Brian, and let's say parasites are those who always show up your door around supper time. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's not parasites. That's just being a good human. Um, you know, so after the so we let all of them put them back in the camps by the parasites. Oh, no. That's okay, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there can be family and friends that are parasitic in nature, uh, you know. But I don't know if dinner is that unless uh, they just, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to go there, uh, you know, because you only got one family, even if they're somewhat parasitic. And friends are hard to come by, good friends. Um, so, but uh, thanks for watching, Joey. I appreciate it. Uh, George says Biden is. Uh, I shouldn't said the name. Is neither that that or that. Uh, uh, how is it? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, that's true. Listen, I've been saying in a long time, George, you know, uh, uh, presidents don't run this country. Central bankers do. Uh, and the uh, covert agencies do. That's my opinion, at least. Uh, let's go move along here. Hey, thanks, Will. I appreciate it. Uh, do I agree that silver is... Wow, perfect timing to ask that question. I think I just answered your question, and I did a whole show on it. Thanks for watching, Mark. I appreciate it. Uh, Mark says, here it comes. Uh, yeah, very strange. You know what? I feel something odd coming on, too. It's just a gut feeling, uh, Michael. I don't know what it is, but I don't know if it's this week, but I just feel something odd. I, I, there's something going on that we're not seeing, we're not privy to, or just hasn't happened yet. I don't know. It's weird. I have that weird feeling, too. Thanks for watching. Yep, can't argue with that. Revolution, uh, got it, and I got it, too. I'm glad you did, uh, Angel. Um, and I think you said in a previous video that we would not be using precious metals to make purchase after collapse. Not going to happen. Yep, that's not going to happen. Does this mean we'll need to convert our precious metals to dollars so we have no value? No, one. Uh, no your dollars are going to always have a value. Look at even Zimbabwe had a value. Look at uh, Germany pre-inflationary marks. You know, was it prior to 1919, you know, one mark would buy you a candy bar. By the time you got to uh, uh, 1919, it took uh, six zillion, or they actually had uh, trillion and or billion dollar German marks, and it took a wheelbarrow of billion, billion dollar marks to buy that same candy bar. So, yeah, the problem with using gold and silver bars and coins is that the public doesn't know what the frick they're looking at anymore, and no one's going to trust it. They do trust a dollar bill, even though they probably still don't know what they're looking at. The general public does not know that, so they're going to use some kind of trade unit, uh, and it won't be gold or silver. I'm pretty certain of that. Now, maybe on a small scale on trades, I want to trade you gold and silver for real estate. I want to trade you gold and silver for your car, your motorcycle, that kind of thing. But from day-to-day -day purchases uh, for food and going to the local store, grocery store, whatever, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, so plan, you know, plan for that. Uh, thanks for watching, Angel. I appreciate that. Uh, utility says I'm not buying a single ounce of gold. I'm a contrary, and we have abundance of gold. Um, you know, not bad. Kind of what I'm talking about in the show, but uh, you know, you should own gold because gold is the money of uh, the elite, the kings and queens out there, uh, and uh, it'll go up with the price of silver as well. Uh, however, I think gold has a much better upside than silver. I think gold, I mean, silver has a much better upside, more volatility, but a better upside in my opinion. So I would agree with that. Uh, too much gold asteroid. Yeah, there's no gold asteroid. You know what? That whole gold asteroid that they're going to mine is such bullshit. You know, they can't even they can't even lift off. Uh, you know, what's it cost them to lift off a 170 pound astronaut? It costs them some astronomical money to get just an astronaut off the ground. So you really think that they're going to use rocket fuels and reentries to try to get gold back down here? You know, the best thing they could do is turn it into a meteorite and hope it makes it all the way to Earth, and then they can recover it there. But <laughs> No, not going to happen. Sorry. Uh, and, it's, and if that was going to happen, you know, there's a whole galaxy out there we could mine. And, that, and that, at that point, it's going to be way past our lifetimes before we're mining anything. Uh, we're not going to be alive. I'm sorry to say that, utility, but I'm not going to be alive. You're not going to be alive. And probably our kids and grandkids won't be alive by that time either. Uh, but it could happen one day. One day gold may be not worthless. Maybe it'll be another metal like latinum. <laughs> That's for you Star Trek fans out there. Jeremy says, in my comment yesterday, some coins... If real, they are worth selling one ounce to buy three ounce. Uh, is it worth selling about? Yes, it is. Sell anything that has a premium that's not rare and collectible. Sell anything that has a premium if you can buy more silvers with it. So if you can turn three ounces of silver into four ounces of silver, absolutely do it. 
Uh, I talked about how to do that with Silver Eagles a few months back, and I made some people a good amount of money, and I made some people a lot more silver ounces in their pocket by saying that. However, people that are in love with Silver Eagles, just because they're in love with them, it's a great product, uh, but they're overpriced, uh, didn't listen to me, and they're still high. You know, they have less ounces than they could have had. Thanks for watching, Jeremy. Michael, thank you, sir. Uh, Performing Arts Collective says, great show. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Basti Spring says, hi, enjoy your uh, videos and greetings from Germany. You mentioned when you sell precious metals going to bubble terry. What price would you currently say would bubble territory begin? I don't have a price point. You know, we've already been at $50 silver twice. I think it's very likely that we're going to break that $50 again. That's why I think silver is way cheap. I think uh, silver has a better chance of doubling in the near term future than gold does. Um, you know, and I like that double up there, especially given all the information that we know that there's a shortage out there for it. Uh, so what price could silver go to? I'm not sure, but I'll know it. I think I'll know it when I get there. I've been through three, two peaks already. Um, you know, but again, uh, bubbles and smackdowns are two different things. Our 2012 market and the last couple of markets in precious metals weren't bubbles as much as they were smackdowns. I mean, they did get in the bubble territory, then they got smacked. Uh, so I don't know how it's going to play out this time, but um, I, I think I'll know it. If you watch my videos, you know, I'll let you know what my opinion is. Am I going to sell my gold right now? And I think it's too high, too, too, you know, or silver. Yeah, it could happen. I could end up buying, uh, um, I could end up buying stock or real estate or anything at a lower price. You know, again, buy when blood's in the street, uh, sell when everyone else is buying. So I think that maybe the bubble will be when my, my, the person that cuts my hair just said they, they jumped in big into gold and silver. <laughs> So maybe, you know what the old thing about the shoe shine kid, you know, when the shoe shine kid tells you to buy precious metals, that's the time to get out. So, hey, got through this video. Wow. And who am I? I am Brian Kuzmar. I am a second generation dealer. I'm in the same location since 1995. Been down here since 77. Um, and I know rare coins, precious metals, paper money, and we even do jewelry, artwork, and other things too, but we don't talk about that. Uh, I offer to beat Atmex SJ, Atmex uh, uh, JM Bullion and SD Bullion, to me, those are the three big guys out there, the three big giants. I think their prices are fair, uh, they're competitive, and so am I as a local dealer. So my suggestion is find yourself a competitive local dealer. Keep that money and jobs and business in your community. Don't ship it outside your community because once you buy from these online companies, again, nothing wrong with them, but if you can find a local guy that's competitive, find a local guy that can give you good advice, uh, you're already ahead of the game there, okay? Even if you're paying a tiny bit more than the guys online, find local, it comes back to you. Trust me on this. Well, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811. If you live in South Florida and you want to do some business, I am here between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Um, if you don't live in my area and you got some questions or things like that, please put it in the comments section. I am very good at returning. As you can tell, I like to reply to comments. And until this, these videos start getting like 6,000 comments or whatever, which I doubt. I'm a small local country coin dealer and bullion dealer. So, you know, keeping it small is not going to hurt my feelings. So uh, as long as I can uh, uh, answer comments and go through them in a reasonable amount of time, I'll keep answering them. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like button and check out my other videos. Talk to you later. Bye now.